after drawing the blood, invert the tubes to ensure the anticoagulant is thoroughly mixed with the blood. Make sure all reagents, the PBS and Histopec, are at room temperature. Carefully pour the blood into a 50 ml conical tube. Take an equal volume of PBS to rinse the blood tubes. This is especially important when dealing with small amounts of blood. Gently mix the tubes and combine into the 50 ml conical tube. The blood is now diluted 1 to 2 and is ready to be layered on the histopack. Add 5 ml of room temperature histopaque to 15 ml conical tubes. Very carefully layer the blood on top of the histopaque. Make sure to go slow so the blood does not mix into the histopaque layer. Alternatively, blood can be layered using a transfer pipette. Centrifuge the tubes at 400 G's for 20 minutes at room temperature. Make sure to turn the brake off on the centrifuge. Remove the tubes. You should see a fluffy layer between the histopaque and the yellow plasma. The fluffy layer is the mononuclear cells. Save roughly 1 ml of the diluted plasma for further experiments. Remove 2 or 3 mLs of plasma. Make sure you do not disturb the cell layer. 
leave approximately 1 ml of plasma. Insert your pipette approximately 1 to 2 millimeters above the cell layer. Slowly swirl the pipette and draw off the cells at the same time. This might take two or three times before you have drawn off all the cells. Add three times the volume of PBS to wash the cells. Mix the cells gently and centrifuge the cells at 500 G's for five minutes at room temperature. Take off the supernatant without disturbing the cells. Repeat the washing step. Take off the supernatant without disturbing the cells. After you're done washing the cells and the supernatant has been discarded, resuspend the cells in ex vivo 15 media. For a normal person, add 2 ml of ex vivo 15 per 10 ml of diluted blood. Try not to make as many bubbles as depicted here. Draw the cells up and down to create a fine suspension. Take 10 microliters of the cell suspension and place into an empty well. Add 10 microliters of trifan blue into the same well and mix. Now plate 10 microliters onto the hemocytometer. Visualize the cells using a microscope. The hemocytometer is a series of grids. You will be counting the cells in the four corner highlighted grids. The dead cells will be blue, the red blood cells will have a faint pinkish color, and your live mononuclear cells will be larger than the red blood cells, clear and reflective. If you adjust the lighting, you can give the red blood cells a pinkish color and make the mononuclear cells more pronounced. In this field, there are 15 live mononuclear cells. Count all live mononuclear cells in the four corner grids. Obtain an average of the cells of the four grids. To calculate the cells per ml, use the formula of the average cells times 2 times 10,000. 
Sometimes you will have to dilute the cells to get a manageable number to count. Ideally, you want 30 to 200 cells per grid. If you do dilute the cells, make sure to factor that value into your calculations. After counting the cells, dilute to 2 million cells per ml with the appropriate amount of ex vivo. In a normal experiment, you will only need 2 ml of cells at that concentration. You will need a sterile 96 swell plate, a sterile petri dish or basin. Stock solutions of your stimulants need to be pre-made. Poly IC in a concentration of 200 nanograms per mil, CPG in 20 micrograms per mil, LPS in 50 micrograms per mil, and Fagellin in 5 micrograms per mil. Pour the cells in the sterile basin or petri dish. Add 100 microliters of cells into 15 wells. Label the plate with the control and all stimulators. The experiment will be done in triplicates, and three wells will be designated to the control, and three wells will be designated to each stimulator. A hundred microliters of media will be added to three wells. A hundred microliters of the stimulators will be added to their three corresponding wells. Cells will be incubated for 72 hours at 37 degrees and in between 5 and 10 percent CO2. Depending on the stimulator, the cells will pellet forming a dot at the bottom of the well or blast, making the well appear fuzzy. Contaminated wells will appear cloudy and will have a purplish or yellowish tint. Open a new sterile 96 well plate. Label the new plate so that it corresponds with the original plate. Then transfer 150 microliters of the supernane from the original plate into your new plate. Guide the pipette down the side of the well and avoid directly touching the bottom and drawing up the cells. Slowly aspirate to 150 microliters. Label the plate, including the date. Lastly, attach an adhesive seal to prevent evaporation.
Store in a negative 20 freezer.